On today's Daz tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix texture poke through in uh, in clothing. Um, so if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss, miss one of my new videos. I do Daz tutorials about three times a week, so be sure to check back often for all the new content, and I've got lots more good stuff on the way. Um, also, be sure to check the description below where I've listed some free as well as some uh, ways that you can support me monetarily. Um, and I've also listed um, all of the relevant products that I've used in this scene. So if you want to use any of these for yourself, you can check those out in the description below. All right, so as I said, I'm going to show you how to fix poke through in, in clothing textures. And right now, I've created basically a worst case scenario. So I'm using an Olympia 8 figure, and I'm using a third party body morph to give her a more voluptuous figure. And then I have two pieces of clothing applied. I've got a blouse and a skirt, which were both made for Genesis 3 figures. And Olympia 8 is based on the Genesis 8 figure. So I'm using a third party morph um, that these clothes weren't made for, also using a base model that these clothes weren't made for, and so they look like quite a mess right now. So most DAS clothing that you get will automatically conform to the model. Um, some of them take some minor adjustments, but most of them do a very, very good job, especially if you buy them direct from the DAS store. They do a really good job of conforming to your characters. Like I said, I've gone to great pains to make this one not work, so that's why that looks so terrible. All right, so um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to enable collision detection. So uh, Daz has a collision detection engine built in where it will automatically make it where the textures won't collide or, or pass through each other. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable that. Some clothing and figures have that enabled by default, but since this is an older outfit, this is also a third-party outfit. It's not directly from the Daz store. Um, so it doesn't have this turned on by default. So first thing I'm going to do is select the blouse in my scene. That's the Amy shirt. You can also select that in the uh, parameters hierarchy if you choose. But after you have your shirt selected, you want to go to Edit, Object, Geometry, and then Add Smoothing Modifier. And that's going to enable collision detection. There we go. So already that fixes like 90% of it. Um, and it also adds this extra parameter over here called mesh smoothing, where we can tweak and fine tune that a little bit, which we may do in a moment. Um, there is another way that you can fix poke through by selecting a specific part of the shirt, like right shoulder bend, and you can manually fix the scale so that it either makes it larger or smaller. That's one way to do it, but that takes a little bit longer, and every time you have to pose it, you're probably going to have to tweak that a little bit. So I like doing it this way, using the built-in collision detection. Then um, you'll see in a moment we might have to make some very minor tweaks using that method, so we will get into that in a second. So the next thing we have to worry about is the skirt. Um, so if I select the shirt again, uh, we'll see that the collision item is listed as Olympia 8. So it fixed all of those poke through collisions um, with our Olympia 8 figure. Um, however, you can only select one collision item at a time, so it's still conflicting with the skirt. So what I'm going to do is enable collision detection on the skirt and have it avoid the blouse. So we're gonna do that in much the same way. We're gonna select the Amy skirt. Edit, Object, Geometry, and then Add Smoothing Modifier. There we go. So that one really didn't do a whole lot to it. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to, um, under Mesh Smoothing, we're going to go to Collision. And here we have a parameter called Collision Interactions. This is basically just how many times that it's going to scale over the image and fix collisions. The higher this number is, the more um, the more iterations it has to go through, and so the longer it's going to take and the more CPU power it's going to take. So you want to keep this number as low as you possibly can to get the desired effect. So what I'm going to do is just slowly start bumping this up. Oh, actually, let me change my collision item first to um, Amy shirt. That actually might help out a lot, because right now it's on the figure, which I really didn't have any collision. There we go, there we go, there we go. That fixed a little bit more of it, but I'm still going to start uh, bumping up collision iterations until we get it exactly how we want it. So you see, every time I bump that up, it fixes it a little bit more and a little bit more, but it's taking a little more CPU power each time. I think one or two more might do it. There's nine, let's try 10. There we go, that looks absolutely perfect. 
So I'm gonna do a quick spin around the model to see if there's anything else we need to fix. Okay, so we have a little bit of poke through kind of on her thigh there. Um, so we're going to fix that manually since we can only have one collision item. And right now we we picked the shirt for the collision item because that was where the huge problems were. That would have taken longer to fix. So what I'm going to do is right click near the offending area. You don't want to right click right on it because that's going to select our Olympia 8 figure, uh, the Olympia 8 pelvis. So we're going to select near that on the skirt and we're gonna select the skirt pelvis. That's the specific area that's giving us trouble. And then we're just gonna bump the scale up. I think if you hit the arrow, it goes up in half percent increments. And we're just gonna bump that up a few times until that spot disappears. There we go, absolutely perfect. And then we'll fix the one on the other side. Actually, that one may have already fixed. Yeah, that one fixed for us. And so we don't even have to do anything with that one. And there we go, that's our figure. So now we should be able to pose that figure in different ways and that should still work. Uh, let's try it and see how that goes. And there we go with a different pose. Everything is still working as intended. Uh, if I were using this pose, I might tweak the arms a little bit just because they're conflicting with the, um, with the uh, waist just because of that body morph, but I'm okay with that for now. I'm just gonna try a couple out and see how they work. There we go, and everything appears to be working just fine. Again, just a little bit of tweaking there. I'm gonna go ahead and tweak this one real quick just to like if I were actually going to use this, I'm just gonna bend the arm up a little. Ooh. Yeah, so it's going a little bit slow because like I said before, that extra collision detection um, is taking some extra CPU cycles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump my, uh, change my draw style down to texture shaded. And I've also got a video that I did last week on how to use the different draw styles. So be sure to check that one out if you haven't, I'll be sure to link to it above. But that's one thing that took me a long time to figure out is how, what all the different draw styles mean. There we go, just move that arm out till it's not in the um, hip anymore. And another way that you can do that is by selecting something, like I'm gonna select her hand, and then I'm gonna use the arrow to pull the hand out. Sometimes this causes unintended effects. Like there, it's making her upper body move, but I'm generally okay with that for right now. I'm just gonna bump that arm down a little bit more, see so if I can rest that on her hip. There we go. And then let's take a look at that in eye ray view. There we go, that is excellent. I am perfectly satisfied with that. And that's about it. So it's a really, really simple thing to do just to fix those uh, really uh, minor issues. Oh, there's one there on the right. So we'll fix that like we did the other one. Just right click, select uh, skirt pelvis, and then just bump up the scale. There you go, just takes a second to fix that. There we go. So if you got something out of this video, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more DAS tutorials coming up. And check the description below for some ways that you can support me as well as links to uh, some of the products that I've used in this video. And that'll do us for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.